guys. This is the big one. Are we going to somehow get a result out of this? Paul, he's played it through to Jamilio Pinas. That is huge for us. So, with the domestic season over and Robin Hood finishing an incredible 10th in the league, we turn our attention today to the international side of this Build a Nation challenge, as Suriname compete in both the Gold Cup in July and the ABCS Cup in October. So jumping right in, let's find out who we're going to be playing in the Gold Cup group stages. Costa Rica, Jamaica, Mexico, USA, top seats. Canada, El Salvador, Panama and Qatar B team. Second seats. We definitely want to be in the same group as Qatar B, I think. Give us Jamaica or Costa Rica and Qatar B. Third seeds, Curaçao, Suriname, representing the ABCS Islands. Haiti and Trinidad and Tobago. And the bottom group, Bermuda, Guadeloupe, Cuba and St. Lucia. If we can get St. Lucia, Qatar B and Costa Rica, I'd be very happy with that. Anyway, let's have a look. Okay, so that's... Well, Costa Rica and Qatar B have been put in the same group. But based off that, we definitely want Group A or B, right? We don't want to be in with USA and Canada. Definitely not Group C. Group D, Panama could be tough. But okay, let's see what we get. Not Group A. We get Group B. Jamaica and El Salvador. Oh, look at Group C. That's rough. USA, Canada, Curaçao all together. Mexico, Panama, Trinidad and Tobago. That's pretty tough as well. Who's the fourth team going to be? Well, it's not Bermuda. St. Lucia, please. Ah, oh, Guadeloupe. Mm, Guadeloupe, bit of an unknown quantity. Unranked nation, of course. Oh, my lord. Poor St. Lucia. Rest in peace. They are in the group of death. But they are not the strongest team there by a long shot. Wow, that's uh, an interesting draw, but one that brings up possibilities for us. So Jamaica, obviously the biggest name to come out of that draw, must be group favourites, especially with the likes of Aston Villa's Leon Bailey and Demarai Gray in their team. Going by world ranking, El Salvador should be expected to get second. However, their squad lacks the standout players that the likes of Jamaica have, making me hopeful of an upset win. And then there is Guadeloupe, a non-FIFA nation, so something of an unknown quantity as a result. With most of their players active in the French leagues and a few more players from around Europe at clubs like Valencia and Sion, they could be tough opposition. An interesting group draw then, and one that opens up some interesting possibilities. Now, if we can beat El Salvador and get a result against Guadeloupe as well, we stand a strong chance of second behind Jamaica. And with the USA, Canada and Mexico all in Group C and D, the other side of the draw, could we even dream of a semi-final? So quickly, make your predictions down in the comments. How well do you think we're going to do? Oh, and while you're down there... Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel as well. As I named my squad, it became apparent that this would be something of a swan song for many players. Already, Diego Bissessoua was unavailable, as he had somewhat unhelpfully decided to retire from football at the end of June and could not be persuaded to play just a few more matches for his country. Mitchell Donald, another player well into his 30s, did join the squad, but would also be retiring, but in his case, just after the tournament. Much more sensible. Thank you, Donald. But in total, we had nine players aged 30 plus in the team, so it would be important that we gave game time to the likes of Marky Mark of Robin Hood fame, who I'd called up to the team, despite him being only 17, as well as his teammates, Sylvian Cherry and Jamilio Pinas, who would be our backup striker to the aging Mitchell Tavrede. The only match we had had since our Nations League exploits the previous year was a 2-2 draw against the Trinidad Tobago side that we really should have beaten. As warm-ups for the Gold Cup, we had arranged friendlies against local rivals Curaçao and Panama. Stats-wise, it was an even game against a full-strength Curaçao team, but we took our chances for a confidence-boosting 3-1 win, especially so as Curaçao had a very similar world ranking 
El Salvador. A slightly bizarre glitch in the game unfortunately caused us to lose a way to Panama. As you can see here, I announced my squad the day before we were due to play Panama. The squad was announced, but when international duty began on the day of the Panama game, I was told most of my players would be unavailable due to their club commitments, even though they'd literally been with us the day before. Oh, football manager. Why do you do this to me? Anyway, putting all that to one side, it was time to get our first major tournament underway as we played our Gold Cup opener against Guadeloupe. So far, it's been a bit of a dull first half. It looks like we're going to go all the way without any kind of highlight. And there you go. Right. Well, all right, we're going to bring on our guy, Jamilio Pinas, to Vredes on a 6.1. That's a shocking performance. Is it just going to fizzle out to a nil-nil draw? Here we go. Lewin plays in Seedorf. Right. Come on, don't do anything stupid here, defense. Good. Han, decent goalkeeper, plays FC Utrecht, I think. So, Eredivisie player. Dankerloy, Dankerloy. Oh, he's been hacked down. That's going to be a red card. So we have a man advantage for the final few minutes. Can we take advantage of our extra man? Let's have a look. Pinyas to Dankeluk. Looking for Kleiber. Whew, come on. Come on. Let's keep this going. Seedorf. Come on. Get the ball into the box. Pal. Cherry. Nice. Seedorf. Can he beat his man here? Get the cross in. Yes. And Kleiber can't get the header in. But we've still got it. Come on. Oh, Pinas looked for the through ball. No, nothing comes of it. After no highlights for so long, this has been an incredibly long highlight. Right, here we go. Pal, he's played it through to Jamilio Pinas. The Robin Hood man fires home. 1-0, that's huge. That is huge for us. Do we have time for a second here? Pal gets across in. It's a penalty. It's a penalty. Nangis. Oh, it's going to VAR. Nengis on a yellow there. Could we see another sending off? I guess we don't these days. It'll just be the penalty rather than the second card. Let's have a look. Cherry taking it and he tucks it away. That secures it. 2-0. There's no way we are not winning this game now. Aced it. Two late goals for a 2-0 win. We are on our way in this Gold Cup competition. Well, we left it late and maybe got lucky with the red card, but what a result. With El Salvador up next, could we grab another three points to mark my 100th game in management? And maybe, hopefully, go into our final group match with Jamaica, having already qualified. Like I say, El Salvador, I mean, we could end up being in for a nasty shock, but they, they just don't have those, like, superstar players that some of the, you know, a team like Honduras, Costa Rica, they might have some players, not exactly world beaters, but players who are playing at a high level in Europe, something like that. El Salvador, don't. Okay, first highlight, it's El Salvador. Of course, they lost their opener against Jamaica, so they will be chasing a win, they will be desperate, and they've taken an early lead. Damn. That is not the start we wanted. I mean, we don't want to go into that Jamaica game needing a result, do we? But okay, we're getting action right from the kickoff here. Let's see if we can get straight back into this. Becker plays into Vrede, to Vrede, to Kleiber. Finds Becker, Becker straight at the keeper. We might regret that come the end of the night. Right, come on. Get in there, Suriname. We need that equaliser, and we need it quick. But, no, oh, there's our key player, Saren, dictating things from the middle of the park. And, ooh, oh, I, th I was just about to say great cover from Pinas. <laughs> what? what happened there? Right, let's get to half-time. And then, well, hopefully we won't be 3-0 down by that point. Come on, Surinam. Sort yourselves out. Damn, we're going to have to beat Jamaica to go through at this rate, unless we can mount some kind of mighty, mighty comeback here. Anyway, let's see. Markello, come on, Markello, get the cross in. Cherry, good. This is more like it, Tavrede, good, good. We got one back. Right, Tavrede, 
plays it back. Mm, come on, we need to be going forward a bit more. I think we're going to have to start hitting the panic tactical buttons in a moment. Come on, Vanderkust, Vanderkust, to to Vrede, to Vrede, just, just, just wide. Ah, oh, no goals in the second half. But look at the stats. Look how we, especially in that second half, dominated. Major disappointment doesn't even begin to describe it. So while that result was harsh, maybe we had got ahead of ourselves with dreams of the knockout rounds and paid the price. And that meant we were in the position we never wanted to be in. Needing a result from the final game against Jamaica. Could we somehow pull it off? All right then, crunch time, Jamaica, Suriname. Let's get your score predictions in the chat. What do you think? Are we going to somehow get a result out of this? Are we going to scrape through or is it going to be a group stage exit in our first attempt at the Gold Cup? <sighs> yeah, Jamaica, of course, have a very good team. We've got the likes of Bailey in here, Baker, Lawrence, and that guy, Damari Gray. They just put them 1-0 up. Yeah, we really needed to get a result against El Salvador, so we didn't need something from this game because Jamaica are just going to be too good for us. I found in the last couple... My God, what was that from Bailey? Did you see the swerve on that? Ouch. Now, I've noticed in the last couple of versions of FM, Jamaica get very good, uh, especially... <sighs> <laughs> especially with the players they have at the start those players get very good very quickly and usually by the mid 2020s Jamaica are challenging often challenging USA and Mexico for supremacy in CONCACAF I think we're just going to get pasted here Ooh, okay luckily for us that one missed but let's see who knows if we can get a quick goal here Oh, no, no, now we're going to get a Jamaica counter-attack. Always the same. You make your big tactical move, and then you go 3-0 down almost immediately afterwards. Look at that. All these guys have had shockers today. They just haven't shown up the Suriname attacking line. I think a lot of them are going to retire after this tournament anyway, so we'll be bringing in some new blood. There we go. We've pulled one back. Cherry. Ah, come on. Come on, at least give us the sympathy. Good. We've got it. Maybe there's still a chance. No, it's a 3-1 defeat. Second 3-1 defeat on the bounce. Well, no surprise with this particular result, but we couldn't help but rue that performance and result against El Salvador. Especially as El Salvador would go on to lose to Guadeloupe in their final group game, meaning we were bottom of Group B and Guadeloupe were the team to join Jamaica in qualifying for the knockout rounds. But don't go just yet. There is more international action to come in a setting that has to be seen to be believed. Elsewhere in the competition, Costa Rica and Haiti qualified from Group A, while St. Lucia had a torrid time in Group C. Heh, <laughs> but at least Curaçao didn't go through. Guadeloupe's adventure would end in the last eight as they lost to surprise eventual winners Costa Rica. So by the time of that final, we were a forgotten early exit. And with a few players retiring after the tournament, and the FA hoping for better future performances, many wondered when our time would come. Oh, it will come sooner than you might think. In fact, how about right now? Yes, how about you subscribe right now and then we move on to the ABCS football tournament. In case you need a reminder, this is a four-team tournament contested every two years by Aruba, Bonaire, Curaçao and Suriname. We won it two years ago and we were back for more of the same. It would prove to be a tournament full of surprises though. The first surprise was Bonaire eliminating Curaçao on penalties in the first match and the second surprise came as we stepped out onto the turf. What is going on with that pitch? Well clearly not turf to play hosts Aruba. <laughs> okay this tournament is being played in Aruba. Um, I guess there's no grass available for us here. That is something I have not seen in FM for a long time. But all right, let's see what we do here. We get a goal straight away. Kleiber set up by Jamilio Pinas. All right, interesting colored pitch we've got here. Certainly not what I was expecting. But all right, let's roll with it. Anyway, good stuff here. Nice, nice bit of interplay. Intricate passing. Kleiber with the finish. Right, let's have a look here. Second highlight of the game. 
why is this pitch surface? Uh, have you seen a pitch surface like this before in Football Manager? If you have, jump in the chat and let me know. Um, yeah, it seems to be... Is it sand? Is it clay? What's going on here? Is it just the groundskeeper's done a really bad job? But anyway, let's get the cross in. Marky Mark, come on. Little burst of pace. There we go. Get there ahead of your Aruban counterpart. And Kleiber with the second goal. Get in. There we go. Cherry getting the corner in. We don't quite get the third goal. I kind of... It's a white ball as well. I'm finding it a little bit difficult to track at times. Okay, here's Marky Mark. Cherry. Kleiber's hat trick. Yes, it is. Get in. Good job. Oh, the referee cruelly calls cancels it out, calls it back for offside. That should have been Kleiber's hat trick. Aruba have created nothing of note all game, and we get a penalty. Kleiber's going to take it, so he gets a chance for his hat trick once again. He was denied by the disallowed goal earlier, but not this time. Get in, my son. Well done, Kleiber. Let's see what we can do here. Mesh up. Come on. Ooh, he gets hacked down. We're going to get here one last chance. Substitute SJAS and oh, it's scrambled clear. But okay, I think we've got the point sorted. And there we go. A 3 0 win. Sean Kleiber, star of the show. We are going to the final. So we marched into the final to take on Bonaire. Well, Curacao, poor Curacao, their appalling look continued as they again had a man sent off and again lost the penalty shootout, meaning they finished fourth and last in the competition without ever losing a match. Time for us, though, to return to the sands of the arena to try and retain our ABCS trophy as we took on Bonaire. In the tournament, yes, again. <laughs> it's the final. Played on sand. I remember many years ago, Malta used to have a sand pitch, didn't they? When they were like, when they really were this tiny, tiny minnow in European football. Um, so they had sand pitches, but I think later UEFA said that all international caliber games had to be played on grass or, you know, certain grades of AstroTurf. So uh, it's interesting to see that it's still alive here in Aruba. We, according to the stats, have dominated this half, but we're only just getting our first highlight. So let's see, can we score from this and have a lead going in to the half? There we go, Becker, Pinas, there we go, Jamilio Pinas with the goal. Good to see the Robin Hood boys getting involved. All right, here we go, Marky Mark, come on. Sherry, good. After all... That extended spell of long highlights. Could we get two goals here? Yes. Geraldo Becker with number two. We're on our way. This is in the bag now, surely. Third goal would just put the cherry on top. Oh, and that's a red card. Of course it is. Kaboom. Kaboom gets himself sent off. Kaboom with the explosive tackle. Right, can we get goal number three? Put this beyond doubt. Penalty yet again. Second game in a row, we get a penalty. Who's taking this one? Is it going to be our Robin Hood man? No, it's going to be the other Pinas. And he tucks it away. Get in. And there we go. We've won the ABCS Cup. And now we get our trophy presentation on the sandy pitch. Don't you just love it? So here we go. For the second time in this career, Suriname are the ABCS Cup winners. Well, that's the first time I've seen a beach party celebration in Football Manager, but now it's time for you to subscribe if you haven't done so already, as we get ready for Season 3 with Robin Hood, coming up in the next episode.